We're getting back on track here with Catherine and Emily, but as you know, we won't stay there for long because this is the Going Off Track podcast. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Going Off Track podcast. I'm Catherine, that's Emily, and for the record, we're exhausted. Very tired. Yeah, like really, really tired. I have never been so tired and never been so sleep deprived in my entire life. Yeah. But here we are. We're 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 here, we're functioning. Um Barely, but, but we are. Yeah, and Emily, you are definitely not where we last saw you if you watched us on YouTube. Um where where are you? I am currently in Los Angeles, actually. So I flew back really late Friday night and landed at like five o'clock in the morning in the U.S. and then I had another flight and then today I had another flight at 6 30 this morning so I've been non-stop traveling since Friday. I am exhausted. I need sleep. (laughs) Yeah and I have had my family in town because my sister got married yesterday um, which was also race day Um, and so I basically watched the start of the race last night on the dance floor um, and then paused and we restarted the race at the hotel after things were done Uh, because I think my sister would have killed me if I was just standing off in the corner watching the race on my friend's phone because for whatever reason my phone wasn't working so I turned to my best friend and I'm like hey give me your phone and I, and I need did it for a really important it. reason <laughs> yes and and then we went back to the hotel and watched watch the race and somehow managed to wake up this morning and be moderately functioning human beings and then I had to I had to work a volleyball match I just got home from volleyball so this has been a long day and a long weekend um but lots this of fun is my, this is my epi- official petition to like move the race time of the Japanese Grand Prix <laughs> Well, speaking of that, um, the race time will probably not change, but the time of year of the race will change for next season. It is now, I I don't remember off the top of my head, but I'm pretty sure Suzuka is now going to be like round four in 2024. It's going to be really early. I think you're right. I think it's before the the break because normally it's after the break and now it's going to be before. Yeah, which is really interesting because I know that one of the reasons why they were so set on having the, you know, September or October type dates was because that was, you know, they've had a lot of um, constructors and drivers champions crowned in Suzuka. So for somehow the FIA managed to to convince the people who run the Grand Prix um, that it's okay that they're going to be they're going to be early because it's better for the environment that they're not going back and forth crisscrossing across the world because sometimes the schedule has been pretty ridiculous yeah it has been well and I'm you know not to take anything away from the environment because I think it's very very important that they are changing this but also just it's so much wear on the drivers yeah like all of that travel has to be just excruciating. So yeah. um, obviously for environmental reasons, the uh, FIA and F- Formula One in general is really working towards net zero by 2030. 30, yeah. 30, yeah, which is super, super early compared to other industries, let's say. Um, yeah. So I think them doing this is going to be a huge step forward with that, with no longer like transatlantic or transcontinental flights every week. So. Yeah, it, it's it's gonna be a lot easier. Even even now, up you know, mo- because we have two weeks until Qatar, the the, the racers are all going back home. So everybody, everyone's going home for two weeks. So it 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 the, the shifts are going to be interesting next season and seeing you know races out of schedule, so to speak. But it's it it, it, it will get used to it. I think is yeah. is the thing. I think it's a welcome change. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So. Well, with that. Let's get into our hot lap recap of the Japanese Grand Prix, Catherine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Max Verstappen came out swinging and won the race by 19 seconds. As I said in our predictions that he was going to come out and punch the field in the throat, and he did, um, giving Red Bull its second uh, straight World Constructors Championship and their sixth overall. Yeah, and something super, super exciting too. I know mm-hmm. we're both really excited about this. Yeah. Is Lando and Oscar finished 2-3 on the podium and this also makes Oscar the first rookie to make a po- or to take podium uh since 2017 when Lance Stroll did it. So, yeah. super exciting. 
Yeah, and funny moment on track, um, Lewis Hamilton uh, used Carlos Sainz's DRS trick from Singapore against him um, as the Mercedes were um, battling the Ferraris and ended up, they, they were that fourth four through seven um, finishers. So that was that was kind of entertaining when Carlos was like, he stole They're my using trick. using my trick. It was, <laughs> They're yeah. using my trick against me, yeah. And, and I, I also, I think it's important to note that like he wasn't upset and obviously, you know, once you do a trick, you know, everyone's going to know it. But he, 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 I think he appreciated Lewis's ingenuity. Yeah, definitely. Um, so Checo had a little bit of a rough, weekend yeah. um he tested the rb19's durability with multiple 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 collisions and retired the car not once but twice in the same race yeah and not only that there were four other retirements it was re- like the first half of the race was really kind of just carnage emphasis on car um so we lost both williams's which was really unfortunate since um you know Albon has just been doing so well lately. Sargent crashed during qualifying, so we lost both Williamses. Lance Stroll had to retire due to a car issue, and Botas just, he took damage on, you know, lap one, turn one, and they tried to fix it. He had a half a minute pit stop, um, and they, you know, went around a couple more times, and they're like, mm, it ain't, it ain't gonna cut it, and yeah, it was, it was no. not a great night, not a great day for him. No, that's two DNFs weekends in a row for Botas now, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's not good. I think he's cruising off into the sunset a little early, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, still, which is a little I know unfortunate. He's coming back next year, but still, it just seems like he's checked out. You know, he he might be cruising until he can like make some awesome deal with Audi or something. Yeah, maybe. I I I th- I, I think that if if he had the opportunity to get in, into a, another team's race seat, I think that he would be, you know, the the Botas that we that we know and, and remember and, and love from his Mercedes days. Yeah, definitely. So that's kind of our recap of what happened on the track this weekend. Just a, a quick hit. But we can't continue the podcast without talking about contract updates, Catherine. We just <laughs> no, can't, we can't do it. Because they keep coming out. About. They do, which is what I absolutely love, and it's also my favorite thing to talk about. Yeah. So, um, McLaren came out and announced that Oscar's staying until 2026, and Alphatari did actually announce, which we thought wasn't actually going to happen because it didn't I didn't. I, we I really didn't think it. so. I didn't think this was going to happen this weekend, but they came out and, and confirmed both drivers, Yuki and Danny Ricardo. Um, are going to be driving in uh, the car next year for 2024. And Liam Lawson will stay on as a reserve driver. So that's kind of interesting to me. Yeah. Um, I thought that they would give this a few more weeks to see how Lawson was doing. Um, but I think personally, this is, you know, just my, my thoughts. I think Yuki brings in too much Honda money to just let him go. Yeah, it's and, and Honda's super integral for like Red Bull and AlphaTauri. So if yeah. like, Yuki leaves, like what happens? Yeah, I don't think we're gonna see Yuki have the oppor- I, I I don't think we're gonna see the that Red Bull has the opportunity to move on from Yuki. Not that we're saying that they need to move on from him, um, but not until they actually change over and, and their their partnership with Ford, which is coming in a couple of years, actually starts. Um, so I, but I I really thought that they. Um, I thought that they should have given it a few more races because obviously, you know, Lawson has beat out Yuki in every single um, race that he's raced in. And um, I think that what they needed to do is see if Daniel was actually, you know, going to be good in the car. Um, Because as much as we love him, we really don't actually know if he's going to be good because there could be, you know, he he could still struggle. Um, And then it's like, well, Liam Lawson's just sitting in the corner like, hello, what else do I have to do to get a Formula One seat? Um, He has to be thinking like, I've been doing really, really well. I'm out qualifying Yuki. I'm, you know, getting points. What am I doing wrong? And I feel like that's the ultimate, like, it's not personal, it's business. Because they really are, you know, the Yuki-Honda relationship is just too much for them to ignore. Even yeah. Though, sorry, uh, even though um, Lawson is doing well. So Yeah, I think that um, they're, 
you know, it, it's like an embarrassment of riches. They have too many good things. But I also think that, you know, there's – A, there there really is no other seat for, for Lawson to go to right now. Um, and I also think that, you know, I think he's being compensated very well for his position as the reserve driver. Um, and if it means, you know, waiting for next year. And I, I, I really think at this point with how, how Paris has been rep- rep- performing, I think that the, both teams will, will decide to part ways. Um, and that will bring Lawson into – um, AlphaTari, and then Daniel will go back to Red Bull and partner back up with Max. Um, yeah. I, I think I really think that's the, the trajectory that we're on, and that we will see Lawson in Formula One as a full time driver very soon. Moral of the story: Can't wait for silly season next year. Oh my gosh, yes! <laughs> it's gonna be so crazy. I'm so excited. It's gonna be uh, amazing. But with this, we only now have one seat left to fill for the 2024 season, which is. Sergeant's seat at Williams. So it kind of yeah. came out. There's rumors again, <laughs> more rumors, um, that Felipe Drog- Drogovic, um, who is Aston Martin's reserve driver, is now p- potentially the front runner for that seat if Sergeant, you know, doesn't keep it. Um, which is interesting. I personally want to see Mick Schumacher yeah. in that seat. I think, you know, with him getting some more experience with. Mercedes and working with you know George and Lewis and Toto I think he's probably matured several years just in this one year Mm -hmm. and I would like to see him you know in the seat again but I don't know and I again nothing against Sargent remember everyone my prediction was that he was gonna you know have a good weekend yeah um but he just has not been doing well he had a horrible weekend in Suzuka um, and he's had two retirements in the last four races. So I think he's, you know, maybe losing that seat. I don't know. Yeah. I, I just, you know, hopefully he, you know, both Williams drivers end up, you know, ha- you know, having a little bit of a reset and then coming back strong in, in Qatar, but it's, it, 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 unfortunately it's just not looking good because even if even if his metrics are you know finishing closer toward the points we're not really seeing that right now unfortunately so so what you know how how you know close do you have to put the goalposts um to him for for him to you know start making progress yeah exactly and unfortunately like in your rookie season it's make or to break it like you don't get a second season to try most of the time so unless you're a Schumacher <laughs> unless you're a Schumacher <laughs> so but yeah that is my uh you know bi-weekly update on contracts <laughs> they're they're just giving us so much to talk about so much so much so I don't know yeah. we'll see what happens I feel like we're not going to get any contract news or anything on Sergeant C for you know the rest of the season so that might be my last update yeah I mean, we're going to have to figure out something else to, to talk about at the beginning of these episodes. Um, but we have going. Nothing else to talk about. <laughs> well, well, speaking of what we do have to talk about, uh, Red Bull has officially gone back to back in the Constructors' Championship. Um, that, you know, it, it happened. We all saw it coming. Um, they had to beat um, Mercedes by any amount, and then they had to make sure that uh, Ferrari did not outscore them by more than 24 points. And they did that because Max won. Um, um, he, he I, I remember seeing um, a meme, it was either last night or this morning when I woke up, that it was like, um, it, it was a picture of one of the graphics that Red Bull used that had um, Max and Checo on it. And it's like that feeling when you don't do anything, but you get credit for the group project. It was like, ooh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Such, I think I saw that too, or maybe you sent it to me, I don't know, but it's like, it's so true. Like, yeah. I mean, I know he's contributed a little bit. Like, he won two races, so you can't say he's done nothing, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he won two races, but at this end, and he has been scoring consistently, even though we haven't really felt his presence because he hasn't been close to the podium. Um, but, I mean, this this was probably, I think people were saying this was his worst race since Monaco, which it really was his worst race since Monaco. Um, I mean, how, how can you, you know, 
get, you know, break your car so badly and then get your penalties and then have to retire the car, um, but then get back in your car while racing is happening and come back out so that you're six laps down on three people who have already DNF'd. Um, there was, there was a, um, Max had a pit stop, um, toward right, right before he came back out and the cameraman like was zooming in on, on the tires and then changing out the tires and then goes straight into Paris's garage where he had been sitting in his car for a good 20 laps. I'm just like, that man knew exactly what he was doing when he panned that way. And, or he was directed by somebody who knew what he, what they were doing. And I, it was just, yeah, it, it's just, it's, it's, re- it's really been rough for Perez right now. Yeah. I mean, I know that I sit and, hate on Checo a lot, but like I would never wish a double DNF to one human in one race. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like maybe to a team, but never to one person. That's just, that's brutal. Yeah. That, that's, that, that's like, you know, Mal, 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 Maldonado level, uh, Formula One records you don't want to have, which I, I guess Acon is is right up there too because he's he's had those those you know heavy penalized races before. <laughs> um, oh my gosh, Austria! I think he had what like over thirty seconds and yeah, whatever it was. Yeah, but he had like four penalties in one race, which like. I think did break the record that was uh, past Pastor Maldonado's. Um, and it, it's just, it's so it's, it's, it's records that you don't want to have, but you know why we keep records so we can find out things that are funny. Um, and that's why we have things like Wikipedia. Thanks exactly. Toto. Exactly. Oh, Toto and the Wikipedia comment, man, it will never get old. He will never live that down. He will never live it down. No. Uh, but again, like we mentioned before, so I just want to move on from this because it's Red Bull and I'm over it. And we're also they, very tired. They, they, they won. We all knew they were going to. I'm over it. Yeah. Um, but something, again, we're really excited about is McLaren had a double podium. Yeah. And both drivers looked, you know, good. And I don't know. It's just, I was excited to see them on the podium. McLaren did force them to switch places and they, you know, followed team orders, which not all drivers will do which I think was yeah. really, really good for them um but Piastri still even with swapping with Lando he still ended up on the podium for the first time in a race because he did land on the podium during a sprint this year but not an actual race yeah. um so it's really exciting like we said he's the first rookie to finish on the podium since Lance strolled it in 2017 um so that's exciting. I'm yeah. so excited. And he Austria. he had to he had to fight for it cuz um yeah. the way the the way it kind of all panned out was, you know, George had undercut most of the field cuz I think George went for like a one stop and um Oscar had to had to fight through it in order to get um you know, get his his podium back and and he 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 really showed that he is definitely like the future of formula and he's very good um and yeah, they, it was it was really exciting to to see him up there finally because he had gotten so close so many times this season and it finally happened. Yeah, did you, speaking of Oscar, did you see the like banter on online with Zach and his mom? Yes, yeah. So for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, so um, Oscar's mom like doesn't go to races because she has so much anxiety about them and like can't can barely watch, so she doesn't go to the races. And so, but for Japan. Um, she was like, I don't know where she posted it, but it was like, does anyone know where I can find a flight to Japan? Yeah. Um, and Zach, who is the CEO of McLaren was like, I will gladly pay for your your airline tickets, like whatever you need for you to come here. And she was like, oh, thank you. But you know, I don't think I can make it. I'll have too much anxiety, but I think I'll be able to conquer my anxiety with meditation uh, before Vegas, (laughs) like throwing it out there, Yeah, which I think is so funny. His mom has been kind of making, I don't know, not like viral um, posting. She she went a a little little viral viral. when, when Oscar was, was uh, joking about wanting to try out um, uh, motorcycle racing. And and she's like, absolutely not child. You are not doing that. She's pretty funny. She's pretty funny. So, um, I appreciate it at least. And I think it's, you know, fun to have that little interaction. I don't know. It's, it's just something different when the moms get involved. (laughs) 
Yeah, I mean, we we don't really. I mean, sometimes we'll see like Max's mom will come to to races, but you know, it, the usually the the biggest presence is you know Max's dad, Lewis's dad, Carlos's dad, who really doesn't come to races because he wants Carlos to like have have his time. Um, but yeah, you you really don't see a lot of like the moms of the Formula One racers. So it's it's fun that we we have um, Mama Piastri, you know, making making us some entertainment. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and one thing to note, too, about McLaren, because I was a little worried about this, with the double podium, <laughs> no <laughs> no trophies were harmed in the celebration. <laughs> so, Lando's yes. broken two this year. I thought maybe something else would happen with them having a double podium and him getting so excited, um, but no trophies were damaged. So, that's, you know positive in Lando's book this weekend as well yeah. besides getting P2 so yeah speaking of those trophies I think it, really you know cool. only only in Japan would you right. get a trophy where when you kiss it it lights up with the flag of your home country so only in cool. Japan yeah only there so cool obsessed yeah love to see it love to see it love to see it yeah. So moving on, um, one of the other happenings a little bit further back is um, Lewis Hamilton used Carlos Sainz's DRS trick from Singapore um, to give George a little boost and and keep Sainz back as the the Ferraris and the Mercedes were um, were battling. And um, Carlos made a comment on it on radio, and it was like it was it was. I thought that was pretty funny. Yeah. No, it was. I. The radio this weekend was pretty good. Yeah, yeah, and there were there. I saw some memes on social media about how Carlos and Lando made better better teammates on two different teams than George's uh, George and Lewis do on the same team. Because um, they were facing each other the entire. <laughs> For like the first half of the race, yeah. it was, you know, George even said on radio, like, who are, who are we, who are we racing, you know, it, each other or the rest of the field? Um, yeah. And, and George, felt George like is it was going directly to Lewis, like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. what is going on? Like, stop. <laughs> yeah. And, and Lewis is just putting, or not Lewis, George is putting so much pressure on himself. Like I said, in my predictions, like he's putting so much pr- pressure on himself to, you know, get to the podium, get to the victory. Um, and it is, it's been little 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 top maybe a week off will do us do him some good yeah so um one other thing that i want to highlight i know it's not like race related but i think it's still really really cool it's great i personally love sebastian vettel love to see him involved in the small capacity that he still is when he hangs around track um so he had b hotels in turn two and all the drivers got to come out and like decorate their own uh, team B hotel and like a bunch of people came out to support um, Seb and his initiative and all that he's doing for his uh, B conservation efforts. He's very, very into, you know, bettering our, um, our world in yeah. all aspects of that statement, which I think is really cool for him to do. Um, and I think, I I got a little excited just seeing him around, but I think it's really, really cool that they're doing this um, and that everyone came out to support. It's not like it was a mandatory thing, but all the, you know, drivers. There were, yeah, there were a support. lot of them out there. And they all decorated them, and it was it was kind of cool to see the content behind the scenes. So um, super cool of Japan to do this. Yeah, yeah, I, I think it's 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 really awesome. They also painted the, the curbs at turn two, um, black and yellow for bees um, and Crafty made some jokes on the broadcast of you know the, to, about the bee hotels he's like I don't think anybody's moved into the hotels yet um, but I, I think I think that's cool it's like oh there, there's a there's a there's a bunch of beehives in you know in, in the track which I think also might be a little scary if you know, know. For, if, like... if, they, if they get spooked <laughs> I know it's like how uh, this could go horribly wrong or be very very cool for years to come yeah. Only time will tell. So. Yeah, but I, I think if, if there's a country where they're gonna like be be serious about taking care of these things, I think that like I think we're safe. It's safe to say that Japan will take care of the bees and will make sure that uh, the bees are properly uh, protected and maintained while motor racing is happening all around them. Yeah, definitely. Uh, now it's my like most depressing ask of you, and you know, mm-hmm. but it is a fun question to ask just because the math is interesting. The math, math. Math, math. So where are we at with Max's World Drivers Championship? When can he win? 
when can he not win? Give me your update. Well, that's actually the the when he can win part of your question is actually really interesting because thanks to him winning and Perez double DNFing himself, um, which I, I don't think we're ever going to let him live that down, um, unfortunately. Um, but um, Max can now actually win the Drivers' Championship on Saturday, not Sunday, because the Qatar Grand Prix is one of our six sprint w- weekends of the season. Um, so the way the math works is Max leads Perez by 177 points after Suzuka because he picked up 26 um, in last night's race, um, and he only needs to be ahead by 172 points after the sprint to clinch it. So that would mean Perez has to outscore Max by six points on Sunday if he wants to push off Max's inevitable, or on Saturday if he wants to push back Max's pretty much inevitable victory to to Sunday. Um, So this will... So basically what you're saying is he will win the Drivers' Championship on Saturday of Qatar. I mean... Yeah, probably. I mean, Should obviously, I you this never in know. Writing, Catherine. No, no. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it is. It is highly likely. And I, I would also like to say, um, in the case that this does happen, called it because I said at the end of, um, in our um, silly season recap episode that I thought that the most likely time of the season that he would um, clinch the title would be in Qatar because it was a very slim likelihood it was happening in Singapore and obviously didn't happen in Singapore because he finished P5 um, and that would have put him a few points back of making it happen in Japan like he did last year so he didn't have his awkward time on that giant throne couch thing um um and so yeah it, it'll be it'll be in Qatar and they'll I'm sure I'm sure they'll pack the t-shirts with them <sighs> what a depressing year it's been but it's fine. not for Red Bull fans <laughs> hey we got we got our one win in uh, Singapore so and it was great need. and it was a great race a great win so I'm happy with that yeah yeah. Dumb. Oh, speaking <laughs> of the the this t- this win, um, that it just it made me think of it because um, they made a joke about, or I made a joke, and people were talking about how Max Verstappen missed um, the Max Verstappen podcast after Singapore, and yes. I made it. I made a joke that they were just filling in for him while he took a week off. Um, in the cool down room, the, um, Lando made a comment about the podcast, and Max was like. I don't actually like podcasts. Um, so if, if you ever thought Max liked podcasts, he doesn't. And then um, I think you sent me a meme. Um, did Red Bull actually send that out? Because I didn't have a chance to look before I was at volleyball. I don't actually know. But I think, I mean, we can look it up really quickly. But I think it's really funny. Because, yeah, so there's, like, I don't know if it's a meme or if it was actually a true, like, press release from Red Bull saying, like, the host, Max Verstappen of the Max Verstappen podcast, like, did not mean that he didn't like podcasts. Like, he, everything is fine, and he enjoys doing it, and he will continue to, you know, do the podcast through the rest of the season. Like, yeah. don't worry. Um, that was, that was either funny. great social media from the admins, um, or it was a top-tier meme um, by, you know, the... Uh, Social media for Formula One is just, it's top tier. I love it. It is great. Um, and, and that was just, that was, that was really entertaining that, you know, the, the Max Verstappen podcast was back. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I can't see if it's real or not, but if it is, it's. Again, what it is, is really F1 entertaining. Socials are the best ever, but if yeah. it's not, then, you know, someone made a good joke. So yeah. You want to know what else is a joke? <laughs> my podium predictions <laughs> this hey weekend. what one out of three is is okay you did pretty good you got two out of three I You're did yeah out. yeah yeah it was so, I I got lucky with that call yeah so again going back to our podium predictions Catherine had Max Carlos Lando I had Max Carlos Lewis we both had Max winning and we got that one and then you had Lando P3 he ended up P2 but that's it close enough Close enough, yeah. And uh, I called pole again this weekend. Not Max that it's Stafford. hard. <laughs> hey, I went. I went with your boy. Um, I know. I know. I yeah. know. It's it's okay. I 
I had high hopes for Carlos, but you know, it is what it is. Yeah, I just Ferrari it, that 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 is a track with serious tire degradation, and that is something that Ferrari is notoriously bad with. So if you're just on a regular track struggling with your tire deg, and then you go to Suzuka where you can do one flying lap. Um, on your tires and qualifying before they're before they're just done like you know Ferrari gambled toward the end of qualifying and they really um they're like we're just gonna give it one shot and they did and it just it didn't it didn't work Max was so far ahead um he he really you know planted the flag so to speak yeah uh so for P10 Again, we picked mm. someone to DNF. I think this is a bad one for us. I think we, yeah. keep, we keep jinxing people. P10 is cursed. Or our P10, P10 picks cursed. are cursed. It is, yeah. So I picked Akon, who was pretty... I was close. Yeah, but, you just got the uh, wrong Alpine driver. I did. It was it, uh, P10 this weekend was Gasly. Um, and then you picked Alex Albon, who uh, did... Mm, not did not finish. finish. <laughs> so. Um, and then for our surprises... We both kind of flopped on these. Liam Lawson did not uh, finish in the top eight, but he still beat out Yuki for the fourth race in a row. Um, and and I, I Logan. Put so much, so much weight behind Sargent. And I was like, he's going to have a good race. And then he didn't. And he did not. So should have, you know, kept him as who's going to do a dumb, but that's okay. Um and again, Yuki finished behind Lawson. He qual- he did great in quality, but yeah. he just did not race well. So um, I wouldn't say it was a dumb, but I just would say he didn't have the strongest weekend. So Yeah, and then mine was that George was going to bin it again because he's just been trying way too hard to, to get that podium and get that, that win. Um, but I, I, w- I would say kind of in the middle because you know he didn't entirely he he finished the race um but and and he did he did beat lewis i believe um but he he and lewis tangled early on in the race and that could have been really bad for them both um and i think it's one of those things where it's like "Mm, maybe toto needs to not miss races so he can like just make sure that things are gonna you know be okay with with the team and that the drivers are going to do what they're supposed to do yeah dad's away so the kids are playing this weekend <laughs> playing is, is is one word um yeah uh, force, forcing each fighting. other off track <laughs> is, is, is another but of, and of course you know it was teammates fighting each other and forcing each other off track so the uh, uh stewards are like no further action yeah. um which there was no damage so obviously it makes sense that there was no further action but at the same time it's like what what would have happened if that was like a, a mercedes and an aston martin yeah, exactly. Not Stroll's Aston Martin because he DNF'd, but an Aston Martin. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe they'll come out next week and say that they should have given him a penalty. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> it's fun. Oops. Oops. It was just Yuki. Yeah, just Yuki. So, anyways. So, up next, we have Qatar. So, the Qatar Grand Prix is... October 6th through 8th. That's the race weekend. Um, We have a week off, so we won't have anything going on this next week, which is wild. I don't know what I'm going to do without seeing your beautiful face, Kathy. I don't know either. I'll call you just for funsies. Yeah, I mean, we'll we'll still talk about the other thing. Who knows? There might be another contract update available. Um, But... Um, yeah, we, and we will not be having an episode next week. Just, um, we're, we're a little busy. I need to recover from this the last week. Emily is going to be, I'm taking um, exams again. you're taking so exams. <laughs> so, so we are going to be taking a quick break from the pod. We will still be active over on going off, um, the going off track Instagram, going dot off dot track. Uh, so be sure to hang out with us there. Um, and if there is any breaking news or anything really exciting, that is where, um, you will be able to find out about it. Exactly. Well, and that was the race that we've been looking forward to all year. (laughs) Suzuka did not disappoint. Yeah, and no one almost died. And no one almost died. (laughs) Gotta love it. Gotta love when everyone walks away. (laughs) 
So give or take, oh, pretty much. My goodness. All right. Well, if you can't tell, we are in extreme lack of sleep zone. But uh, that has been the podcast, and thanks for going off track with us, guys.